County Commission, uh, July 8th meeting to order. Uh, roll call, Mr. Manning. Mr. Rich. Present. Mr. Venable. Ms. Gilbert. Present. Mr. Sias. Present. Chairman, present. <coughs> we'll have a prayer by Mr. Porter and our uh, pledge by Ms. Gilbert. God, our Father in heaven, uh, we are again before you to be blessed and thankful for this county. <coughs> All the wonderful people of the county, God, we're thankful for this country, the freedoms that we have, and God, we do pray that we'll never take them for granted, but we'll always give you the glory for everything that we do and everything we accomplish. Right now, we pray for those that need special prayers. We pray for uh, Commissioner Venable as he's undergoing some tests. We pray for good results from those tests for him. We pray you watch over and guide us all, God, every day. In Christ's name, amen. 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 To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all right, um, we have no old business, we're we'll moving on to new business. First, we have a motion to hire a temporary employee for the sanitation board. This will be for the, uh, they were needing somebody temporarily to wash the cans uh, as they're bringing them in. Uh, maybe some carry them back out as people come in and pay their bill, that type of stuff. It's a lot of repair on a lot of lids and damage and stuff too. But yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Got a motion and second. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. All opposed? Social Security. Number two, we have a motion to approve the lowest bidder and award the patrol of American Contracting and Services for the uh, deck rehab on County Road 43, Matt Matheny's Bridge. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Uh, motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. All opposed? Motion carried. Uh, number three, we have a motion to approve and sign a resolution leasing the land of the sportsman land into the city of Scottsburg. I'll make that motion. Got a motion. What is this lease? How long the lease are we talking about now? 99 years. Yeah. They're going to do some repairs, get it fixed up for the people that are ready to use. It will be open to everyone, not just a club. Will they make, do all the repairs, maintenance? So <coughs> yes. Sir. No, at no cap, at the cost of county. No cost of county. Do we have any type of questions <coughs> on this? If they build any type of new structure or anything? I know early on, several years ago, we had looked at possibly building some stuff down there, but financially we couldn't. And we ended up doing some stuff at the park. Uh, we didn't put any stipulations in the first building. I'm pretty sure they have their own building inspector. And yeah, but I, it, it, that's a Pretty good piece of real estate. Yeah, the only thing they were talking about was updating the ramp uh, and pieces of the penny table. If we were ever financially able to do it, I would like for us to, to use that piece of property. <coughs> and I hate to turn it over to the, to the city and, you know, them, they're, they're already, you know, we're kind of in competition, whether we like it or not, between these farm county parks and right. with uh, laws and stuff. Do you think it would be possible if we could write a grant to do something with it? We checked into several things. This is several years. Matthew Hodges was still here and we just never could get anything off the ground to do anything with it. But, uh, I like it's the kind city. of opposed 99 years. Yeah. The city just wanted, like I said, it's, it's grown up. Uh, the organization that did have it, um, the well, gentleman got older and wasn't able to take care of it, so it's grown up and just it looks bad. and. I think the mayor and some of the city council would just want to try to, you know, fix it up so it wouldn't be such an eyesore and the community could get out and use it. When was the last time something that it's been usable? Uh, they will use it now. Yeah, they it's use probably it not a safe place. It's right. a safe thing to use, but it does get utilized a little bit. Can we not put it like on 10 years with an option to renew? I mean, that, I mean yeah. if you're going to do that, we can move it to the next work session. Yeah. How many acres are we looking at, Jason? I can't remember. I think 
think it was close to seven acres that they have there. Yeah. I tell you, uh, we'll table it and then I'll put it on the next work session. Uh, and then we can discuss it further in our next work session. I'll try to get some more information for everyone. Okay. Number four would be a motion to accept the uh, hiring committee's recommendation for the vacant full-time EA1 position, grade 7, for the Public Works Department. I'll make a motion, or Mr. Layton, a uh, second. We've got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Next be a report from staff. Mr. Manning. Yes, sir. I'm going to take just a moment to uh, pass out some information again this week uh, about the general fund revenues. Uh, basically, they pay in $620,000. We lost uh, $750,000 for that when the education admin fee uh, got turned upside down. Also, the city admin taxes <coughs> excuse me, dropped $250,000. That was the largest drop we've ever had since been dropping and that was five last year there so and the second uh, a couple of pages what we're talking about public safety not just roads but public safety for all the citizens <coughs> in the county uh, I also included the copy of the budget for this current year's budget for the sheriff's department and for the jail so everyone can start seeing you know what it's what it's taking to run the county operations uh, speaking to the gentleman about the roads, uh, the entire county general <coughs> fund is uh, $8,620,000. That's the entire fund. Uh, our operations for the Sheriff's Department is $2,770,948. The operation for the county jail, $2,150,615. So that's almost $4.7 million of that $8 or public safety. And I'll assure you, neither one of those departments are overpaid or underserved. <clears throat> and while I'm talking about this particular part of the public safety of part of our county budget, there will be some problems uh, on down the road if we don't address this as a county. Uh, it's just a matter of time. And we've discussed this, we've discussed other revenue sources for the county with the delegation before. Uh, we've discussed a lot of different items. Nothing has got done in this previous session that just ended. Not one thing got done for the county revenues in this previous session. So I think recently it was mentioned that we might need to tighten our budget a little bit more. Well, I invite the delegation or anyone to take a tour of our county jail. They'll be glad to take you through it. I would love to see them take a tour of our county jail from front to back, talk to our uh, the people that work down there, see if they feel like they're overstaffed or overpaid. We have got to get serious about public safety in this county and the road issues and other things. But it's just like the chart I showed a couple weeks ago. Right down the hall in our uh, uh, revenue department where we do the tags, we do about 66,000 tags a year. The state of Alabama gets $1.5 million of that. The county gets $82,000. That's the type of things that's happened to our county over the years. And it's not just in there, but we need to know what's going on in our county. We're going to start sharing some information with you guys. But nobody had an idea that the TAG office that we operate, we staff, and we do the 66,000 TAGs. And think about it. The state takes $1.5 to Montgomery. We get 82000 Now, with people like that working for us, or I should say working against us, we've asked for a TAG fee increase. Nothing happened. So, how long has that tag fee been in effect? Indefinitely. It's, it's probably been a dollar and a quarter for 50 years. Right. And we've asked to have that updated. Give you an idea, our neighbor, DeKalb County,
take these ten dollars, they bring in seven hundred and thirty thousand dollars per year to their general fund. What about my boat registration? It, it just how much of that money do you keep? It doesn't say on here. I think it's a dollar and a quarter, a dollar and a half. Some, it's about the same. We don't do a lot of boat registrations, but those are the type of percentages. It's like 96 or 95 percent of that money that, you, that our citizens are paying is going to Montgomery. Five percent stays in our county. And driver's license, we also get to do those. Uh, we get. 4% of that money, and the state gets 96% of that money. Okay, and, and you supply them with a place to do it. And we supply them with a place to do it. So, this is just a few of the items, but, but out of this $8.6 million county general fund budget, if we were to fix those roads that we've all been talking about, it would have to come out of the general fund. So, as you can see, it's it's not there. And I know people are tired of hearing that. Yeah, but I have been here since August of 2013, and I have looked at a lot of different of items on this county budget. And this county has had the can kick down the road for 30 or 40 years. And people refusing to fix the problem and do something about it. This commission is trying to do something about it. The previous commission tried to do something about it. But we have to have some cooperation with the delegation. They, they cannot put a tax on, they cannot increase the tag fee, they, cannot do, they can't do any of that without it going through the delegation. So uh, I just want to share that information with everybody and there's going to be a lot more information like this coming out because I want everybody in our county to see how we have been taken advantage of for so many years. And I'm personally tired of hearing that, oh, well, they just need to tighten their bill. They need to tighten their budget. I analyze this budget, and I, I welcome any of those people that have all those answers. They've got a, a direct invitation into my office. I'd love to sit down and talk to them. I'd love to share some information with them. So uh, just want to let everybody know that there's more of that type of information coming. Rocky, did you want to add anything to that? No, just on the public safety, you know, aspect. We, you know, we've been working with uh, three deputies sometimes at night for the last several months. We've lost a few people, and it takes a while to get them trained while they're in the academy. We've got one in the academy now. We've got another one that's starting the academy next session. And really, until they get out of the academy and get fully trained and know the county, they can't do anything. So, you know, we're working with one less person. So during the during the the summer, okay, you know, vacation times, people have got their leave schedule. So if somebody's off, we've got three deputies working, sometimes two cars working out here at night right. when all the crime's going on. And, and it's just, it's overwhelming. Not to mention the fact that the crime rate has gone up. Uh, people are getting crazier as far as doing things that are illegal. And our jail's a, a perfect example of that. We're, we're built for 208, and we're keeping around 230 in there right now. Right. Well, and, and that goes with what we're talking about, the concern for public safety in our county. And if we don't do something about this, we're going to be talking about something that's not going to be very pleasant one of these days. Because I, uh, again, I invite them to go tour our jail and see how overstaffed we are and how overpaid. That we, we can't hardly keep jailers now. I don't know how many we've lost since the first of the year. But it's a continual flow. And that's a 24-7 job, fellas. And the Sheriff's Department is too. They don't just work eight hours and go home. This is a 24-7, 365-day-a-year, those two operations. And I just encourage people to learn more about your county government and where the money should be going and where it's not going. And there will be more of this coming out later. Thank you. Jonathan, you have anything further? Oh, I'll add a little bit on the roads um, section of that. Um, I appreciate the comments, and I do apologize for the inconvenience and, and condition of the roads. I know that's been brought up before. Um, I'm hopeful that we're at rock bottom, but I, I'm not positive. If change doesn't occur, I, I really don't believe we are. But I can assure you that there's no one that wants the roads fixed any faster than this body you're looking at. 
we're the county employees that do the work. So sometimes we may forget even even at that level what folks deal with. But I would just ask too that you be mindful of the county employees. They're citizens, they drive the roads, they use the roads, they work on the roads. Uh, 25 is today is trying to do what over 50 used to do. So when we think about that and you think about the scenario they're faced with, it's really a no-win situation. You know, they, they ne their work's never caught up. They're never complete anything. They deal with constant disasters, and they're lucky if one disaster is finalized before another occurs. So if you can imagine being an employee where you face that daily, and you work in that grind daily, and then you go through seven years of no raises because the general fund won't allow it. The road work that used to be funded by 116 and 112 funds, the general fund consumes that and still can't meet the mark. So there are a lot of problems, but, but it's, really, it's really fairly simple. Those, the county employees, that is one thing this county has is excellent county employees. And they can do about anything, but they can't do what they can't pay for. So it's, it's really as simple as that. So thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Porter. I just want to comment on the same thing everybody's been talking about, and that is the authority of the county to raise taxes and to impose taxes upon the citizens. And uh, I've explained, unfortunately, I had to educate. I've done this for a while, and I've had to educate Mr. Guthy and then Mr. Hodges before he, <coughs> Mr. Hodges came from the city. Uh, the power is just not there um, to, for, the, for this commission to generate revenue without the assistance of the um, legislative delegation with some kind of local act. It's just not there. Mr. Duffy called me fairly frequently, quite frankly, and said, can we do this? And unfortunately, the majority of the time is you cannot legally do that. That's not something the commission has the authority to do because if the code does not give you that authority, then you don't have it. It's not like a city. A city can generally manage its own self. It can raise taxes, it can spend funds, but the county is limited to what the code book says they can do. It's pretty limited. It's pretty limited. So uh, to the extent that, uh, that they can do something legal, we certainly want them to do it. But at the same time, we don't want them to violate the law and try to impose taxes on anybody or raise taxes or do anything else. So it's unfortunate that that's the state of the county. So. Thank you, Mr. Porter. Yes, sir. G.K.B. That's good. All right. Uh, Mr. Rich, I just like to thank everybody coming out, and I assure you, we're working as fast and diligently as we can on all the roads. And I know there's businesses that that depends on that 93 of uh, the golf course over there is one of them. You know, yeah. I believe I talk to them, and they several people like me do construction work, they travel 93 all the time to get materials and stuff, uh, but just. Hopefully, we get a you know get things rolling not too long, and when we have that, pub, I'd like to have a public a community meeting out there. Then that way, ever everybody can maybe understand a little bit what we're going through. I mean, it's just not something you can just jump out there and do. Mm -hmm. but, uh, that's all I've got. I apologize for coming in late, and I want to thank everybody that came to sign up to speak. Uh, I apologize to you mainly because uh, I would like to urge you. We don't get a lot of public uh, input, uh, sadly, uh, but I do appreciate you coming. The more voices we can get together, the louder our combined voice to be, and, and we appreciate you coming. Excuse me. Um, just wanted to echo what everyone has said about that and tell um, Mr. Manning and Mr. Hodges Porter appreciate them clarifying some things and Mr. Campbell for the public. That is always very really helpful. And we're going to make it to the fourth safely. Mr. Sitz. Kind of just a repeat from the other ones here, Mr. Thomas, Mr. Allison, Mr. McAllister. Thank you. You are citizens. That, that is your duty to come up. We are here to listen. And uh, it is sad to be one of your elected officials and feel like we are kind of not doing our job. So uh, that's kind of the way it looks. But I assure you, I'm an old farm boy, and my, my children will tell you, they ain't nobody going to be any tighter on saving money than my dad. But you know, we haven't wasted anything. Our big thing is, it's like, <coughs> can't 
Campbell just said, he's keeping our employees. I mean, we've lost a lot of good employees the last three or four years. And I uh, hate to see them go just because we don't have the pay scales that we actually need. And as Rocky said, you know, trying to keep things uh, uh, going in this jailhouse for the crime situation that's going on each and every day of our lives and having to train up. It's a long way from Payne Rock Valley to Brian, Alabama, where y'all live, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I see them over my ear, then they turn around, they could be out there on that mountainside. <laughs> Uh, but I just want to say thank you for the ones that y'all come out tonight and voice your opinion. And we're going to do our best to try to make things happen. And like I told the guy yesterday, yeah, it's going to take place. Right now, we are kind of a standstill. It's going to happen. Thank you all. Uh, I don't really have a lot. I just want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, remind everybody the fifth, uh, July 16th at 6 o'clock, town hall meeting in courtroom one. Uh, that'll be a week from tomorrow. Uh, I invite everybody to come out to that. I think it's really important that the community come out and uh, voice your concern about uh, roads, bridges, uh, law enforcement, uh, whatever your concern you have. That'll be the night to voice it. Um, that a regular meeting will be next Monday at 4 30. With that, I'll accept the motion to do it. I second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? We're adjourned.